Hi everybody! I am that nursing prop and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the stages of labor. So there are four stages and then the first stage is broken up into three phases. So what's happening during the first stage is dilating. So mom is going from zero to 10 centimeters. In the latent phase, which is the first one, mom is gonna go zero to three. Then active, now we're going four centimeters to seven. And then finally the transition, mom's gonna go eight centimeters to 10 centimeters, so fully dilated. So that's all what's happening in the first stage. Then we go on to the second stage, which is the birth of the baby. So the actual pushing the baby out. This is followed by the placenta. So the placenta has to come out too. So after baby comes out, the placenta comes out. That's the third stage. And then the fourth stage is mom's recovery stage. So now that we know all of this, let's actually talk about these in more detail, starting with the first stage. The first stage of labor is broken up into three separate phases. The first of which is called the latent phase. So during the latent phase, mom is dilating zero to three centimeters. There is some mild effacement, which is the thinning of the cervix, and some minimal descent of the fetus. She's having contractions, but we usually would classify those as like mild contractions. Their frequency is every 10 to 15 minutes and their duration is about 15 to 20 seconds. So she's in the beginning, everything's just kind of starting. And how is mom acting? Usually at this point, she's pretty excited, right? She's pretty talkative. It's like, okay, I'm really having contractions. The baby's actually coming. Today's the day I've been waiting for for so long. So normally she's pretty excited. She might be acting like she's having pain because of course the contractions, but it's usually like pain she can deal with. Usually it's bearable pain. Some things the nurse will do include drawing labs. So some basic labs everybody needs are like your CBC, because we need to get your hemoglobin and hematocrit. We need to know your baseline. We need to know your blood type and antibody, just in case we need to give you blood transfusion later on. Um, and then any other labs maybe we didn't do prenatally or we don't have access to those records, like a rubella screen, we'll do that as well. Inserting an IV. Now this is really gonna depend on mom and her wishes. Um, if she is somebody who wants like no medical intervention, she wants to be as natural as possible, then you're probably not gonna do that. Most women um, will appreciate having an IV in case of an emergency, in case you have to give emergency blood. Or later on, if they're gonna want something like an epidural, they're gonna need to have an IV because you need to give them fluids. So. It kind of depends on mom, and a lot of these interventions we're going to talk about are going to be dependent on the individual patient and their wishes. But these are some things the nurse could do. External fetal monitoring, so getting a baseline for baby's heart rate and mom's contractions. And we're going to use Leopold's maneuvers to find baby's positioning so we know the best place to put the monitor. Now again, depending on what's going on with mom, this could be continuous, like if she has like risk factors or anything, or um, it could be intermittent and we only have to do it every once in a while and mom can be free and get up and walk around. So it's really gonna depend. The fun stuff, now's the time to do all that admission paperwork. And actually now is the best time to do that because yes, mom is in pain, but it's not enough that it's like so distracting that she can't answer your questions. You know what I mean? So like later on when she's like pushing, you're not going to say, oh, excuse me, can you verify your insurance while she's trying to push the baby out, right? Like that's not a good time. This is the best time to do that because then she's going to be able to answer your questions. Things we're doing, of course, we're going to do a full head to toe. We need to get a baseline. We need to know what's going on with her. We also want to assess the fetal heart rate, mom's contractions, any pain, the status of her membranes, so has her water broken, yes or no? Her vitals, and then how far dilated she is. At this stage, she may or may not be allowed to eat. So some women are made NPO at this point, especially if they're going to get you know, a medication like a Cervidil, then they have to be. Um, other women are not, so it kind of depends. This is still really early. And then education, like I said, like with the admission paperwork, 
Now is the best time to talk to mom because she's not going to be so distracted, okay? She's going to be able to focus and pay attention to any education that you give her. So this is the latent phase, which is the first part of the first stage. Now let's talk about the active phase. The second phase of the first stage is the active phase. And that is a very appropriate name for this phase because a lot is going on. So mom is dilating four to seven centimeters. The effacement is 40% to 80%, so almost completely. And then baby's descent is quite progressive. She's having those contractions and now they're not so mild anymore. Now they're much stronger. And they're occurring every five minutes and lasting 30 to 45 seconds each. And in this stage, mom is in pain. And that's not to say that mom wasn't in pain before in the latent phase, she was, but this is where it's starting to become like less tolerable and more of a distraction, okay? This is like, okay, I am really feeling it. Like this hurts, okay? It's that kind of pain. So our nursing interventions, focusing on breathing techniques to kind of like help them cope with the pain, if mom wants an epidural, this is the best time to get it. You don't want to get the epidural too early because it could actually like slow the progress of your labor. And then getting it too late is not very helpful. You know what I mean? And there are some people who do that. They wait until they're like nine centimeters to get the epidural. But at that point, it's not very helpful. So this is the very best time to get the epidural if that's something you want to do. So if desired, if they're going to do that, we're going to need to put in a Foley catheter. And then we could do other comfort measures, right? Um, so like nice things like dim the lights, position changes, cool washcloths, things like that. And then just like before, we are going to still monitor her. If she's going to be on the epidural, she has to be continuously monitored, okay? So checking her contractions and checking baby. And then also checking her blood pressure too. So we need to make sure everything's okay with mom. But the active phase is actually really appropriately named because there is a lot of progress being made at this four to seven centimeter mark. Now let's go into transition. The final phase in the first stage is the transition phase. And in this phase, mom is finishing up her dilation, right? So we're going from eight to 10 centimeters we should be completely effaced and baby should be down. Baby should be down low. So eight to 10 centimeters dilated, effacement 100% and descent is dramatic. So baby is there, baby is ready. <laughs> so our contractions at this point are every two to three minutes and last 60 to 90 seconds. So this is perfect, okay? This is what we want. These are perfect pushing contractions, okay? Ones that last. 60 to 90 seconds and occur every two to three minutes. So we're getting real close to pushing. At this point, how is mom acting? She is in a lot of pain. She is not happy, okay? So she could be restless. She could be hyperventilating. She could be sweating. Not a great time to give instruction. Um, she's gonna have a hard time following directions because she's gonna be so distracted by the pain. Um, increased bloody show will occur at this point. Mom could be belching, hiccuping, um, she could report nausea, she could be vomiting, and then she'll report an increased rectal pressure because baby is so low now, okay? Baby's like right there and it's kind of like sitting on her rectum and she's feeling it, okay? She might even feel the urge to bear down and try and like push on her own without, you know, without being instructed. So mom is ready <laughs> at this point. Our nursing interventions, prepare for delivery. So if you haven't got your delivery tray set up with everything, do it now. Now's the time. Get it done. And then if you do have to give any education about like breathing techniques, because maybe mom is like hyperventilating or something like that, uh, make sure it's short and to the point. No long explanations at this point because she's not gonna she's not gonna be paying attention to it. Okay? So transition is considered the most painful phase of all of the stages. Okay, so transition, baby's almost here, we're almost ready. So those were the three phases of the first stage. Now let's talk about the second stage. The second stage of labor is the pushing stage. 
So this starts after mom has completely dilated and then it's over when baby comes out. So this is going to be very dependent on the individual. For some people, this will last, you know, just a couple minutes, just a few pushes. And then for some people, this can last a lot longer. Now, textbook says two hours, and that's what I'm going to tell you. In the real world, have I pushed longer than two hours with people? Yeah. Yes, I have. And that's just because maybe like the position their baby was in was making it harder for them, that kind of stuff. But a few minutes to two hours, that's what you got to know. Crowning is when the head is visible, so we'll see crowning upon this. And then nursing interventions for this stage, coaching. Coaching mom on pushing techniques. So that's why it's really important that you know the parts of your contractions, okay? So the peak or the acme, the strongest part of the contraction, that's when we want mom to push, okay? To voluntarily bear down. That's what we want to do. Of course, during the interval, so during the time in between contractions, we want to encourage mom to rest because we don't want her to get too tired from pushing because that happens too. Sometimes people, they put all of their might into pushing and they're doing it for a long time and they're not resting and then they're just like, I'm done. I can't push anymore and then they have to have a C-section. So we want to encourage pushing when you're supposed to and resting when you're supposed to. Um, perineal hygiene, that's like a very nice way of saying you know, sometimes moms will like defecate during the pushing. They don't mean to, of course. And we just kind of hide it and act like it didn't happen and nobody knows the wiser, okay? So that could be something you as the nurse need to do, okay? And then of course, be supportive. Whether that's like physically, like holding a leg and supporting them up, or just like emotionally being supportive. Because this is hard, this is scary, especially if you've never done it before. So your nurse, you, the nurse, are the patient advocate in this situation, right? So you want to be very supportive of them in this second stage. Huh. Now let's talk about the third stage. The third stage of labor is known as the placental separation stage. So this is when the placenta comes out. So it begins right after baby is born, so with the birth of the fetus, and it's over once the placenta comes out. This stage can last up to 30 minutes, and that's actually like significant, that's important. It should not go longer than 30 minutes, okay? If it lasts longer than 30 minutes, usually they're gonna take mom back to the OR and remove the placenta that way, okay? It does matter because during this stage, mom is bleeding a lot. And we don't want her to bleed too much, right? We don't wanna have a hemorrhage on our hands. We also don't wanna be crazy and say, oh, we need to get this placenta out as soon as possible, so let me yank on the cord. Like we don't wanna do anything like that either. Okay, so let it naturally separate, right? Hopefully it does it within 30 minutes. Most people do, and if not, then you actually have to go deal with it in the OR. So how do we know? What are some signs that it's separating? They'll see a gush of blood, the cord will lengthen, and the uterus will rise. As far as our nursing interventions, we want to, of course, monitor vital signs, Encourage bonding because baby's out at this point, right? So they can do skin to skin while we're, you know, dealing with this. That's fine. Um, pain meds as needed. Documentation. Now, I didn't mention it before, but all of the stages, you should be constantly documenting everything that's going on, okay? And then oxytocin, pitocin. A lot of times the doctor will order um, a bag of pitocin during the stage to help get the placenta out and actually to help with bleeding so mom doesn't bleed too much, okay? Because it causes the, the uterine contractions, causes the, the uterus to clamp down. So that's the third stage. So when you think third stage, think placenta. Now let's talk about the fourth stage. The fourth and final stage is the recovery stage. So this starts after the placenta comes out and lasts anywhere from one to four hours or until mom is stable. So until her bleeding is under control and her vitals are stable. Our nursing interventions in this stage include a proper, you know, head to toe, but our main focus is being fundus, lochia, and vital signs. We're gonna administer oxytocin if we didn't do it before in the third stage. We're going to apply ice packs to mom's peri area because, you know, it's going to be swollen and sore after delivery. So this is going to help comfort her. And then now we have the baby, right? So we have to assess the newborn too, okay? So make sure baby is stable as well. 
So those are the four stages of labor. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.